All right, well, welcome back. Uh, in this video, I, I got to introduce some percents because we're going to be dealing with percents for the next few ideas, like percent increase, decrease, and then mixture problems, which people kind of stumble on. So I want to make sure that we, we cover that really thoroughly. In order to get there, we have to talk about what percent means. So this is going to be a very quick video, relatively, uh, where, where we discuss what that is. So when we hear the word percent, what percent literally means is parts of 100. So when we have 1%, that that really does mean one part out of 100 or 100th. Now we can write a fraction or we can write a decimal, but that doesn't it doesn't really matter. That means one part out of 100. 1 over 100 or 0 0.01 100th. What I really want you to know in percents is that these are all interchangeable. In fact, going from here to here or here is how we change from percents to fractions or percents to decimals. That's important. Um, a lot of people are just going to tell you, well, put the number over 100. That's absolutely true. Or just move the decimal two spots to the left. That's true also because of these reasons. So we're going to try very quickly with a couple examples writing, um, writing our percents as fractions and then writing our percents as, as decimals as well. So let's start with 27%. What I, what, I, what I want you to see is this one little change that will make this stuff relevant. For instance, if we have 27%, you could actually write this as 27 times 1%. Now, why am I doing that? If I can find 1% there, well, then I can substitute it. I can either make this a fraction Hey, 27 is 27. 1 percent means 1 part of 100. And then if I understand how to multiply some fractions, that's 27 over 1, 1 over 100. Numerators get multiplied, denominators get multiplied, and we now have changed a percent into a fraction. Could you go straight from here to here? Absolutely. Just put 27 over 100 because percent means part of 100. This literally means 27 parts out of 100. No problem, but this is the way the math works behind it. Now, let's say that we wanted to write this as a decimal, 27, <clears throat> excuse me, percent as a decimal. Well, so from right here, instead of choosing our conversion 1% equals 1 out of 100, let's choose 1% equals 0 0.01. 27 times 0 0.01, calculator if you want to, that'll work. This would give you 0.27. This is where a lot of people get the whole idea of, well, to move a, make a percent into a decimal, just move the decimal two spots to the left. Yes, that's true, because what you're really doing is dividing by 100. Multiply by 0 0.01 is equivalent to dividing by 100. So if you want to give yourself a decimal, move two spots to the left, that's how you change a percent to a decimal. This is the way the math works though. So I'm going to show you a couple more times, nothing, uh, nothing too fancy here. If you want to change 6.9% into a fraction, sure, we could go ahead and do 6.9 times 1%. That's 6.9 times 100 for your fraction, or 6.9 times 0 0.01 for your decimal, either way. Uh, now, a lot of people are never going to show that work. A lot of people are just going to go, well, you know what, if I have 6.9%, that means 6.9, look at that, 6.9 times 1, 6.9. Over 1, 1 times 100 is 100. 6.9 parts out of 100, that's what that means. Now, unfortunately, we can't leave it there. You can't ever leave a decimal in a fraction. It looks really awkward. So we're going to use a little bit of fancy-dancy math and understand that if I have a fraction, let's make this 0, 0.0, I can multiply the numerator and denominator by the same exact number and still have an equivalent rational expression or equivalent fraction. What that means for us is, man, just move your decimal. Look at your numerator, which is going to have the decimal in it. Move the decimal enough spots to get a whole number. In this case, that'd be like multiplying by 10. So if we multiply by 10, or just move the decimal one spot to the right, just copycat that thing with the denominator, very much like working with equations. 
This would give us 69 thousandths, or 69 parts out of 1,000. 6.9 parts out of 100 is the same thing as 69 parts out of 1,000. For a decimal, just multiply. Use your calculator to multiply, or move your decimal two spots to the left. In this case, we should get 0 0.069. One, two spots to the left gives us 0 0.069. That's how working with decimals works. Why don't you try these two? See if you can do them on your own. Um, I, I, don't, I don't really care if you, uh, if you want to show the math or move the decimal or just write this over parts of 100. That's okay. Uh, the, the main goal here is to get you to work with, with percents, and it's kind of a, a remedial section for us. So, um, two point zero, man, point zero two percent. How do how do we change that into a fraction? Two ways: either use the math like I've shown you, write this as point zero two times one percent, use the conversion, or write this as point zero two over one hundred. Point zero two parts out of one hundred. That's exactly what this one percent would do for us. This would become 1%. That's 1 out of 100. You'd multiply. You get 0 0.02 times 1 over 1 times 100. You'd get exactly this. Is this good enough to leave? Can you leave that? No. No, you can't leave it. What would you do? Try it on your own if you can right now. Try moving the decimal. How many places would you have to move the only decimal up here in order to get a whole number? However many place values you have to move, do the same thing on the denominator. So we would have to move two place values that means that down here, you're going to have to create a decimal to move two place values. That's 2 over, let's fill in some zeros, 2 over 10,000. Looks good, right? Looks, looks fine. There's only one issue. You need to be able to simplify this. So we have to simplify 2 out of 10,000. 27 hundredths, you can't simplify. 69 thousandths, you can't simplify. 2 over 10,000 is the same thing as 1 over 5,000. So divide both numerator and denominator by 2. So yeah, all of our fractions still have to be simplified. Now, let's try the decimal if you haven't done that already. Let's change this percent into a decimal representation. A couple ways we can think about it. First, you could write this as 0 0.02 times 0 0.01. This would be 1%. You'd separate it. You'd get 0 0.02 times 1%. That 1%, you could write that as 0 0.01. No problem. <clears throat> if you multiply 0 0.02 times 0 0.01, that's the same exact thing as multiplying, or sorry, as moving our decimal two spots to the left. That's where that action comes from. That's why everyone tells you just move to the left. You're right. Move two spots because you're multiplying by 0 0.01. Or likewise, you're divided by 100. That would give us an equivalent decimal of, let's see, add your zero in, 0 0.0002. The one thing I don't want you to do is get in the habit of writing your percent every time. The reason why I teach the, my students about what this means as 100 or 0 0.01, 100, is so that they don't keep on writing the percent. That percent drops out of the math because it means 0 0.01. The reason why I don't specifically like teachers teaching just move your decimal place is because it doesn't reference what this actually means, okay? And then a lot of students just end up writing the percent all the time. That, that's a bad deal. So when we're doing the math, what this really does for you, it takes your 0.02%, it changes it to 0 0.02 times 1%. It chooses a conversion, either 1 over 100 or 0 0.01 to change the percent. That's what's happening. That's where the percent goes. This literally is this. That's why you get to change it. That's why you don't write the percent anymore. So that's the math behind it. Uh, here's the, the conversions for you. The last one we'll do pretty quickly. Um, even if you have whole numbers, this is still possible to do both a fraction and a decimal. 329% means 329 parts out of 100. You could choose to write this as 329 times 1%. That 1% would become either 1 over 100, that would give you the fraction, 
no simplification necessary, or it would give you 0 0.01. Multiplying by 0 0.01 would give you the decimal. If you like the moving the decimal place, really all that's happening is you're creating a decimal, moving the two spots to the left to get 3.29. So that's the idea here. That's what I wanted you to get out of this. Um, can you go backwards? So let's say that I gave you a decimal, could, or a fraction even, could you go backwards and give me a percent? Well, yeah, for sure. That, that's going to be this part. So if 1% equals 1 part of 100, 100% means 100 parts out of 100. Well, that, that's 1. So that's kind of cool. We can always substitute 100% for 1. That gives us a way to convert back and forth. Before you go any further, ask yourself this. Do you understand? Not can you do it. That's a different question. Do you understand why we are taking 1% and choosing 1 over 100 or 0.01. Do you understand why we're not writing percent anymore? Do you understand that that percent, that 1% is wrapped up in 1 over 100 or 0.01? That is where that is going. Uh, if you do, then, then continue. If not, uh, watch us through a couple times and make sure you really get the, those conversions, okay? So uh, let's go backwards. Let's do just a couple examples. Starting with this one. So the first question, is that a percent or is that a decimal? Well, well, it's a decimal. There's no percent next to it. Even if a, a percent has a decimal in it, we call that a percent representation. Here we have a decimal representation of a number. We're going to change that to a percent representation. So we want to represent how many parts out of 100 this is. Now this is kind of cool, but um, if you put your decimal right after the hundredths spot, you automatically answer that question. This would be 39.7 parts out of 100. That's kind of cool. Now of course, I'm not that easy. I would show you the math behind it. So what's the math? How do we get this to be a percent? Um, it seems logical, pretty much to, to most people who get this, that if you move the decimal two spots left to change from percent to decimal, you'd move two spots right to undo that, to go from decimal to percent, and that's absolutely true. But let's see why first. So 0.397, uh, well, here's a weird thought. If you multiply by one, does that change the value of that number? Multiplied by 1 never changes the value of the number. Never changes the number at all. Always gives you back. It's multiplicative identity. It gives you back what you started with. Well, wait a second. This is cool. If we have 0.397 equaling 0.397 times 1, which it certainly does, look what we can do. We now have another conversion. 1 equals 100%. So what I want you to get out of this, what I want you to miss, is that there's a way to remove percents by using conversion or there's a way to introduce percents by using a conversion. All we have to understand is that 1 equals 100%. I showed it right here. 1 equals 100%. So we can introduce a percent into a decimal. If 39.397 times 1 and 1 equals 100%, 1's the same thing as 100%, they're equivalent. Then what that tells us to do is if we just take our calculators out or use your head, whatever you want to do, multiply 0 0.397 times 100, and that adds the percent into our expression. This is the percent representation. Yeah, could you just move the decimal two spots right? Of course you can. But this is the reason why that works. I hope that makes sense to you. Uh, we're just going to do one more. Maybe you can try this one. This will be a quickie. 25.1 is a decimal re representation of a number. Let's change that to a percent. So two ways to think about it. Either you're going to move your decimal two spots to the right, Twenty-five ten, but don't forget that what you've done by doing that, you've multiplied by 100%. <clears throat> or, take a little bit more time, 
Understand that any number you have in the world can be multiplied by one and not change the value of it. So when we're writing a percent, we're not changing the value of the number, it's just a different representation. If we take that one and we let that be a conversion, 25.1 doesn't change. 25.1 times 1 still is 25.1, but it lets us see something. It lets us see that 1 can be replaced with 100% all the time. That's what this says for us. And if we multiply 25.1 times 100, percent, you keep your percent. We get 2,510%. That's the idea. And you always check your work, too. If you were to move the decimal two spots back, you'd get your decimal back. That's the idea. Now, uh, one slightly more advanced concept uh, is how you change fractions into percents. So let's do something like, um, like 3 eighths. If we need to change 3 eighths into a percent, well, we're going to need to know what a fraction means also. So a fraction always means divide. Divide the numerator, the top number, by the denominator, the bottom number. What that's going to allow us to do is translate first to a decimal, and then we know it's pretty easy to go from a decimal to a percent. It's not that easy to go straight from here to a percent. There's really no great way to do it because a percent is based on decimal numbers. Um, so unless you want to deal with some hundreds here, and I'd, I'd recommend the decimal version. It's a lot easier. So if you had never seen this before, you might want to go back to pre-algebra, watch the conversion from fractions into decimals. But what we have to do is create for ourselves some decimal. Whatever, whatever decimal you put here, put it up top in the same place value, and start dividing. 8 does not go into 3. 8 does go into, we pretend it's 30. We already moved our decimal. It goes in 3 times. You get 24. You subtract, we get 6. You keep adding zeros and bringing them down. until you get a remainder of zero. And once you do, that is a decimal equivalent of that fraction. So we know right now that 3 eighths is the same thing as 0.375. That's the decimal representation of 3 eighths. No problem. They mean the same exact thing. Just one is actually divided into a decimal. Now, can you change that into a percent? Well, sure. Either go through the process, multiply by 1, change it to 100%, or move your decimal two spots to the right. That's fine, as long as we understand where that percent's coming from. I don't want you to gloss over this and go, hey, I do this or I do that, because you'll get it confused. Or you'll move it once accidentally. You're multiplying by 100, or you're dividing by 100. That's because we're in a base 10 system. That's two factors of 10. That's two decimal places, right or left, depending on whether you're going to decimals or from decimals. Don't forget to put your percent in there if you're changing from decimals. And that's about it. Now, next time we're going to use some of this. You see where we're going from here is we're going to talk about percent change, percent increase or percent decrease. Then we're going to start talking about some distance problems for a little while. And then we're going to get to mixture problems. And that's going to wrap up our, our word problem portion of these videos. So hopefully that made sense to you. Practice some decimals into percents and percents into decimals. I'll see you next time.